Bennett. You're listening to The Peel. Welcome to another edition of The Peel. What's up, y'all? What's up? I'm Justin. I'm Sean. And to the, what is that, left of your screen? Uh, yes, yeah, that would be your left. left. Yeah. Uh, we have Edson. He is running our social media tonight. So He's playing producer tonight for the show? Yes. Um, so reach out and, and tweet him. Tweet at The Peel. Uh, hit us up with Facebook messages to, to facebook.com slash The Peel 2005. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. Yes. Uh, and then uh, also in YouTube chat, too, if you're watching live. Hit us up in YouTube chat. He's on there as well. So we've got all the social media channels covered this yep. week. So hit us up with discussion points. Not that we don't have enough to discuss this week as oh is. Oh, my God. We're, we're probably, just as a heads up, we are guaranteed to go probably over an hour, almost guaranteed to probably hit an hour and a half, which we did last week, but we're even more likely to hit this week. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's even worse this week than it was last week. And Josh isn't even here. No. That's great. Uh, but we can't give Josh. Anniversary, Josh. Yes. Remember. Happy anniversary. Um, you two lovebirds. So yes. Cute. Uh, so, um, giveaway hats are the best. Yes, they are because they're free. Yes, absolutely, Andres. <laughs> you are 100% correct. And um, actually, this is one of the more comfortable giveaway items that they've had. Uh, yep. You couldn't wear most of them other than the T-shirts. And as you can tell from the you know, the stream, I'm a little bit of a larger guy. And uh, <laughs> the shirts they typically give out are larges or extra larges. And those don't fit me very well, especially in the heat. So uh, the hat is a wonderful item for sure. Shout out to the Dynamo for the giveaway. Yes. Uh, let's see. So tonight, uh, it might help if I actually get the timer started so we can oh, hey, get everything going. Great. We're five minutes behind. No, it's all right. We're uh, like no. two and a half minutes. Yeah. So we've got, uh, we've got a lot to talk about tonight. We've got the... You want me to give you a rundown? Yeah, if you want to give all the right, rundown. So we got, first up, we're going to do Houston versus San Jose. We're going to recap that match, and there's so much to talk about from that match. It was a good match, but lots to talk about. Yep. Uh, we're going to talk about after – we're going to do a break, and then we'll talk about uh, the scores from uh, this past week. We're going to start going into discussion on uh, Vancouver versus Houston. Uh, we're going away to them this week. Uh, and then also the uh, some stuff related to the, to the three matches within eight days thing, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, and then league news and schedule for the week. Uh, and then we'll also get some RGV with Carson Merck, who yes. we love with a passion. Uh, big, big weekend for them. Uh, big match. The one coming up or the one they no, had? No, the one had? they just had. Yeah, it was, it was great. Yes. Um, and then the uh, we'll talk about the U.S. Open Cup final uh, coming up and the semifinal, I guess. We probably should give a little shout-out for that one. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Houston Dash. I got something special for um, the Open Cup. Talk. Oh, all right. We got the Houston Dash. Uh, and then there's some closing thoughts related to uh, – to a couple things that you guys definitely want to make sure you stick through the entire show because it yes. will be worth the end. I promise you, this is one of our better, better shows this week for sure. Uh, and we haven't even started yet, so I tell no. you, it's a great show. So we are here. We are live at Eighth Wonder Brewery. Um, our my probably my favorite brewery in Houston. Not to single anybody out, but it is. Uh, you don't have to suck up to him. Oh, I'm not just sucking up. Just because Bobby's being the honest. best manager here doesn't mean you got to suck up. Bobby's not the manager. Oh, Justin Davies is. Oh, well, he acts like a manager. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um. But we no, the eighth, eighth Wonder for sure is one of the best breweries, yes. bars in Houston, bar none, especially downtown. Um, and the atmosphere out here, like, you know, we've been out here an hour now, roughly, give or take. And, you know, there's a lot of people coming in and out out here. Uh, it's, a, you know, it's a really nice area. Even though it's hot and humid, it is still very comfortable so, because it's shaded. Speaking of that, so funny story about today. Uh, normally we were in one of the private rooms off to the side of the, very much so, the taps. Yeah. Um, get an email saying that somebody had booked those rooms and you know they pay for those and then we end up uh we don't we we get told that we're going on the stage which we're getting I bumped take. yeah absolutely. it's like relegated but promoted all at the same time it's a promo pro rel <laughs> argument to say the least it's great pro rel argument that's best relegation ever yeah um you get, you get relegated to the big leagues <laughs> that's basically <laughs> how that works um but again uh sean or josh happy anniversary absolutely uh, for sure I'm surprised Amber has put up with you that long. That's the only wow. knock I'm going to put on you. Um, Dude, Josh, you're a good guy. Don't listen yeah. to this jerk. <laughs> nah, he knows I love him. But uh, I guess we'll go ahead and dive right into it. We'll start a little early since we got enough to go over. You got the lineups over here? Uh, I can. All right. Well, that's that's the first thing on, on tap is the lineups. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, I guess we could go with score. Uh, for anybody who didn't attend that match, and first of all, if you didn't attend and you live in the Houston area and you didn't have a like legit excuse, shame on you. What a fantastic match that was. I was recovering. Uh, the Dynamo went up one nothing early on. Uh, it was within, what, 15, 20 minutes? 
uh, was the first goal yes. uh, by uh, Albert Lelise off a corner kick. Um, and then uh, a bit of stagnation throughout the middle of the match mm-hmm. until the 86th minute. Uh, and then, uh, of all players, Vicente Sanchez <laughs> scores a goal. Uh, and it was a hustle play goal. He deserved that goal for sure. Uh, and then uh, the uh, – oh, well, okay. He deserved that goal, and Albert Lelis definitely deserved the assist on that goal. That nutmeg he did on that defender was just yeah. outright dirty. And, uh, and then we uh, you know, truly, truly sealed it literally at the death to go up 3 nothing with a, a final goal. Literally, as soon as the ball went in and as soon as the players got back to position, the referee blew the whistle and there was yeah. no further kick. So it was the last touch of the ball was a goal so by Morrow, which was awesome. And there, yeah, it was great. We, we do have a few talking points few. alone for, for this match. I mean, yellow or red card that was rescinded to a yellow card. Uh, which PKs. I do think, and, and even though they won't say this, I do think VAR played a role in that um, because I did see the, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it, but I... The official, the the main ref, the head ref, the on-field ref, he did go to his, you know, he touched his ear, mm-hmm. and that usually signals that he's talking to VAR. Okay. He didn't make the VAR symbol, but that may have been VAR telling him, this is what we see, it's pretty clear, this is the case. Because what the referee wanted to call was Dogso, mm-hmm. denial of a goal-scoring opportunity. And in this case, the goalkeeper was in a position that he still could have potentially made a play on the ball. And thus, it wouldn't have been a dial of a goal-scoring opportunity, but the foul still existed in the box. Thus, it was a penalty kick. Um, and, you know, that that I'm glad. And I said that the Dynamo would get screwed at some point. Uh, it's okay with me. I didn't feel like we got screwed by that call necessarily. I felt that it was a fair call. Yeah. Um, I felt that it was the right call. And I've said all along, as long as the referees, especially with VAR, are using it to get the calls right or using to change a call to make it right, then I'm okay with it. When I am going to be upset with it is when it is a call that is a blatant call or a blatant no call, and it, you know, and it, and and then they go, call the wrong way when it's a wrong call. Yeah, um, that's when I'll get upset. But right now, I'm totally, completely, 100 percent on board with and VAR. I think he went to the red card a little quick on that. I, I, I feel like, and I think we'll see this a little bit more. And I think you might have mentioned this. And if it wasn't you, then we might. It might have been uh, Cisco or Jason, uh, the guys that I sit with. Mm. Um, I think we're going to see this more, where referees are more inclined to go to their pocket for a red card quickly, because VAR can only come into play on a red card. Correct. So it gives VAR an opportunity to have a chance to overrule or to come back and say, "Hey, you may want to look at this again," type of thing. And we see it in football too, where referees will allow a player to score a touchdown or they will specifically not call a foul because they know that by not calling it a certain way, instant replay is instituted uh, and is enforced. And so they replay whatever it is, like a fumble return for a touchdown or mm-hmm. something of that nature. Um, you know, referees for their league, and I think we'll see this with MLS, they have learned how to operate within that confines to get more calls correct. And that's what I've said all along. The goal of this is to get more calls correct on the field and in the run of play during games. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely attributing to that for 100% for sure. Is it perfect? No. But we're still two weeks in. Yeah. Um, In case you don't see my expressions, it gets breezy here a little bit. We have a banner. Last thing I want is for our camera to fall over. I'm, uh, I'm actually more worried about the tent above us because, boy, that sucker would look like it was ready to take off a few minutes ago. <laughs> um, so one other thing to talk about, too, besides yes. VAR, unless you had something else to add to VAR. Um, no, not not really on VAR. So we got to talk about, man, Kubo's form right now. So that was one of my biggest discussions that I wanted to have about this match. And So hit me with it. Um, so I, I think this was a com- or, you know, a combination of the last couple matches rolled into one. He hasn't been in form. Uh, he misses a PK, which pretty much sealed it. If I was Wilmer, he would have been subbed off right then and there. That was too early um, in the match. Meh. Morrow's missed a PK, and he didn't get subbed off. Morrow's also a lot younger. Morrow in A terms, lot younger? Are you sure about that? In, in, in soccer age, yes. Okay. I'll give you that. I, I, I'll, I'll, give you I'll, put, that. It, I'll put it at that. I'll give you but we'll, we'll wait to get through that, because i got a couple other things that happened earlier in the match. Um, and it was... So, Kyoto... And it started early. It was the eighth minute. It was one of the first clear chances that we actually had. Um, gets across from Ricardo. He has the open he guy. He leaned in so far back on that shot. He was basically horizontal with the ground when he shot that ball. I don't know if that's the one you're talking about, but no. Okay, because no. man, he missed that first one so bad. But he had a chance. If you look through the run of play and watch it a few times, he could have stepped 
secured the ball and then dumped it off to Beasley. Uh, Beasley had an open open lane in the net. So you know that that's kind of the catch twenty two with a forward though, right? Or with a with a winger striker uh, yeah. guy. You know their their first in, inclination is to shoot, not to pass. Mm-hmm. Um, you know it's a Bruin type type thing too as well. Um, but it's something that he's learned um, and something that he's done better with. I still think he has a long way to go, obviously. Yeah. But you know for the money that we're paying the guy, I can I can give him a pass on that. I think his form will improve. Uh, as well as we, you know, as he gets kind of back into regular form, I think yeah. he got completely out of form because of injuries and and Honduras national team time, which unfortunately sucked majorly. But um, you know, like we discussed last week, um, which by the way, if you didn't listen, you can go listen on YouTube, our YouTube channel, yay, um, or iTunes, or I'm just kidding, iTunes, SoundCloud, <laughs> or uh, Google Play Music. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things. I think he'll recover. I think he'll, his form will, will improve over time. Again, you know, he's got to get back into it. He's got to get that confidence back. He doesn't look the same player to me right now. No. Well, him, uh, Elise is kind of getting back in. But him and uh, Kubo. I think it took Elise half a game to get back into it. Even with the goal, the goal was great, but that wasn't the typical Elise goal. I think after halftime, he came out and he looked as, as good as he's looked all season. Yeah. Um, so he's. I feel like he's back. I feel like he's returned to that point. Um, but with at least or with Kyoto, I, I you know there, there's definitely improvement that can be made, and I think Wilmer will help him get there. Um, you know, and he still is our second best winger by far, mm-hmm. um, and that's not a knock on Vincent, Vicente Sanchez at all, because you know he's our no, he's I want to say like fourth or fifth best, but last <laughs> night or t- Saturday night he was our second best <laughs> he, winger he by a long way. He, he jumped up a few spots. You know, that's the best that he's played with the Dynamo for sure. Yeah. Um, well, he had had times where it looked clear like he could he could catch a goal or score a goal or two, but I think it was just that part of the match where the the defenders were tired. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. had played almost all of them had played he, he's midweek been or you know in the middle of the week. They were already mm-hmm. tired coming here, and it was great. I mean, it was perfectly set up for us to just run them into the ground, and we did. Yeah, but. That game really should not have been three nothing. It should have been five six nothing. So let me let me move on to, to no don't, don't move on from Vicente. I had a story related okay. to that that I thought was great. Okay. So at the at the match, and this is the first time this has actually happened at the match, which was pretty cool. Uh, Vicente Sanchez um, was warming up on the sidelines in the first half, and there were these three guys in section like one thirty nine ish, roughly mm-hmm. right around there, mm-hmm. uh, and they started chanting his name and rather loudly, loudly <laughs> enough that he you know acknowledged them, and yeah. then they continued their warm ups and they did it again, and then you know they, they the players walked back to the bench and everything, and then you know left for the second half, and then came back out and started warming up, you know in this in the second half around the fifty fifth minute or so, mm-hmm. and he was over there, and they started chanting his name again. And uh, the first player to be called over, actually, for a sub was Tomas. Tomas was actually called over before Vicente was called over. And then Vicente was called over. Mm -hmm. And when he was called over, those guys erupted in cheers. And that whole section at that point had already, like, gotten (laughs) just hyped about it. And so he comes into the game, and they're, you know, cheering and chanting for him and everything. And when he scored that goal, that's directly in front of 139. When he he walked over to that spot, did the flip right in front of them, (laughs) and then got on his knees right in front of their section. Can I just say about that flip, if I attempted that, I'm ending up on my face. Dude, and he's 37 years old. (laughs) Give the dude props. That was incredible. But on top of that, the end of the match, you know, comes, and, you know, they're cheering for him still and everything. He walked over at the end of the match. He took his shirt off, and he handed it to one of those guys. Nice. And and I had a buddy with me. It was his first game ever to come, uh, first Dynamo game, first soccer game, actually, to ever go to live in yeah. And, you know, at a stadium or anything. And uh, he goes, that was the most in sports in- endearing sports moment, top five, easily top three, really, he's ever seen. And, you know, the guy's big into football. He's big into baseball. Yeah. That says a lot. And, and that's MLS in a nutshell right there. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Anyway, it's not that true. It was a cool story. Uh, and, you know. I'll wait for my Torres thing. I do have to say, Leonardo and AJD played extremely well. So, not just them, but Machado, man. Yeah, Machado I, I meant that. His still, name in Machado, Machado is just... Machado was one of our, and you know it's crazy. We have so many good offseason signings that it's hard to put him in the top two, but he's a top two signing mm-hmm. in the offseason. And that's, you know, you're you're discounting Cabezas and you're discounting Elise and you're discounting Kyoto. I mean, that's yeah. that's crazy to me how many good signings we had this offseason. And the thing was, if all of them came good, we would be in this position and look where we are. We're yep. in this position. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, oh, probably Morrow. 
Morrow yeah. gets a gets a shout out too. He busted his butt that you know for what he played. He mm-hmm. he when he came into the match, he played his his butt off. And and as soon as he came in the match, you saw him immediately working with Tomas, and it was great to see. It really. I'm gonna save really the Tomas was. talk for the last part of this. I, I know, I know. But I mean, it was uh, just. It, it was. I mean, we actually probably will break before that. To be honest with you, I, that was one thing I forgot to mention before we started. Oh. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, he just as soon as he came on the pitch, he was immediately coordinating with Tomas, and it wasn't so much. You know, it was great to see from Tomas's standpoint, but from Morrow's standpoint, this is a young kid basically taking a leadership role, taking on the the opportunity to to even his young age start coaching up another player and yep. start start forming that you know that bond start forming that on-field camaraderie and that team atmosphere i was shocked and it was like one of the greatest moments of that match Mm -hmm. and it it didn't you know to me it wasn't going to lead to a goal until literally the death yeah but it was still it was great to see out of both of them but especially out of morrow with all the stuff that he's gone through and how long it's taken him to get where he is and, and that he's still fighting that for that starting spot and you know that i mean that that really you know he's fighting for that starting spot with Torres, and that's yep. You know he he's showing he deserves it at this point. I think you have a reason to agree. So yeah, oh yeah, I, I totally do. And after this match, I think he should be the starter. But uh, there was one and probably only one bright spot from Kubo. Um, there was a bright spot. Yes, in the twentieth minute, Kubo, Coop uh, right before the Elise goal, Kubo did end up crossing it to Kyoto. Oh, yes. And Kyoto yes. could have scored. Yeah. yeah. Could have. But it was yeah. also a good save. Um, they actually had a couple of good yeah. saves in there. For and young honestly, player. that was the only bright spot I for Kubo. I was Kubo. glad it wasn't Romando. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Um, Romando. That wasn't RSL. I'm sorry. Bingham. Yeah, Bingham. There you go. It was, it was, it was a national team keeper. I was close. <laughs> uh, a few a few feet um, off, but that, you know, neither here but nor there. But ended up coming er, to come the uh, Fruition, I guess is the word yeah. that I look for in the 21st minute when uh, Ali scored a seventh in the of the season with a corner from uh, Boniac, which I do have to say Boniac, after really not starting for uh, a, a long stretch, actually pretty, played pretty well. I can't say he played great, but he did play well. He lost possession a lot, um, and he made some bad choices on passes and things like that, but I think that's one of those things that comes from playing time. Um, I think my biggest concern before we move on from Torres, you know, from Kubo really is, and, and you said it earlier, how do you miss that PK? I mean, it, it was, you know, one of the guy in front of me made the point that Kubo typically does a double stutter, and he yep. only did a single stutter on that one on the run-up, and, and it showed he ran up slow, and it just looked awkward, and it wasn't a good PK from him. I think he'll I think he'll correct that. That's Josh okay. is listening. He said uh, Tarble was the San Jose goalkeeper. Um, which, yeah, that guy. That is one thing we have to do. We'll run through some some more notes and we'll, yeah, the we'll just go straight through the lineup. Yep. Um, probably the only other thing was, I do have a question. You think that was a foul on Kyoto in the 26th minute? He was... Yeah, you have to remind me what that play was. So he had went down. Oh, and I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, the answer to that looked, is no. It looked like it could have been, and then I saw the replay, and it just... Don't he, get me wrong. The guy shoved them off. Don't get was, me wrong. I was on the opposite side of the field. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was literally, literally opposite side of the field. So I couldn't really see it all that well. But mm. when I watched it, you know, when I was watching live, it did look like, it didn't look like a foul. It looked like he dove a little. Now, he embellished it. And I think that's why the ref didn't give him the call. Yeah. was because he embellished it. That ref was hacking pretty hard on the embellishment, which was kind of crazy. Um, it was very abnormal to see. Um you know, it, it definitely played into Elise's yellow card, mm-hmm. which in the 38th minute, which sucked because that's a yellow card accumulation. Yep. But on the flip side of that, it's kind of a good thing because it helps Wilmer make the decision on what to do for these next three matches. Which means he's stuck playing Kubo Morrow out wide. Or Memo. Or Wanger. Or Sanchez. I wouldn't mind seeing Memo. I wouldn't mind it either. I don't think Memo will, but I think Memo may on the b- end up on the bench. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it, I'm anxious to see what he's going to do. He could play Alex out wide too. Alex will be back. That's true. Um, I think I'd rather have Memo playing out wide. Oh, I would by far. Alex is not a wide player. No. Whatsoever. Um, and, and I feel like I don't think Tomas will start, but no. But the well, kid deserves it. We'll get into that one. <laughs> so. 
the the lineup wasn't too too different than normal except for Boniac playing uh, in place of Alex. Yep. With Alex getting yellow card. Yep. And that was literally the only major change yeah. in the lineup from our like quote unquote favored starting yep. eleven. Um, so you had Derek and Goal, you had De La Garza, Machado, Leonardo Beasley on the back line, Clark Cabezas, Garcia, uh, you know, midfielders, and then Elise Torres and Kyoto on the top. We don't need to read their lineup. They didn't do anything whatsoever. Wando was piss poor. Wando not, not looked like Wando. Uh, you know, it was <laughs> it was great to see him not score here again. That's, oh, yeah. that's all I'm saying. Um, if I heard the stats right, and our three subs were Sanchez, uh, Morrow, and Tomas. Yes. Just so that gets thrown out there because uh, we didn't talk about if that. If I heard the broadcast right, so when I went back and rewatched the match on MLS, it does it through. It did it through NBC California, so I was listening to San Jose's broadcast, which yeah. sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, by the way, their announcers are like some of the worst co- commentators. In all soccer. they were doing was complaining about the heat yep. for 90 minutes. Yep, that, that's them in a nutshell. And I've I've had to do that a couple times on their broadcast, and it's just like nails on a chalkboard yes. level of irritating. Uh, but they said that Wando scored his first goal against the Dynamo last year? Yes, he did in 2016, okay. and it was, it was under Coyle. He scored it in one of the first matches he, they played here. It was a head scratch. I, I I didn't I didn't know. Yeah, no, it was um, the most frustrating thing in the world because he had gone so long not scoring a goal against mm. us at all anywhere, not just here, but at all, and then he goes and scores here, which and it was just yeah, it was miserable. So we'll we'll go over to subs and the goals real quick, uh, which will set us up for our next sure point, which is Tomas definitely. Um, so we had Albert at least with the uh, the assist from Boniac in the twenty first minute. Sente Sanchez, the old man, uh, scoring in the eighty six with the. Uh, with the assist from Albert. Um, and then Morrow, which could be argued, Morrow did score in the 94th minute. Um, he did. The ball was not yes. over the line yet. No, but I, I understand why he did it, because going back and watching the replay, that ball was rolling extremely sh- extremely slow, and it looked like it could have bounced off when it hit the when it hit the upright. Oh, it would have bounced off the post and gone in. Almost 98% sure of that, yeah. but the ball hadn't gone over the line. He... He wouldn't and, seal it. And, and you know, I, and I've said this a couple times on Twitter too. Vicente is going to sit there and he's going to say that was a great play by Maro. He was glad that he followed up on the on the ball. Yeah. He doesn't care that he didn't get the goal. He's not getting paid based on the goals. I can guarantee you. You know, he he was happy to see him score. Mm. You know, that's the type of player Vicente is. And I'm extre- like I said all along, I'm extremely happy he's here. Yeah. And it showed in that exact play. And Maro went over and hugged him. I mean, you know, he appreciated it and vice versa. So. Um. Sorry. Yellow cards, disciplinary stuff. Oh, uh, Elise did get one in the 39th minute, which rules him out for next week. Yep. Um, or this weekend, excuse me. And then uh, Boniak got one for uns- uh, unsporting behavior in it the 50th. Was, it was a tackle. It was a hard, hard challenge, and it was definitely worthy of a yellow. I saw it, and I went, damn, that's Boney setting at the tone type of tackle. Like, it was it was Garrido-esque, if, if mm-hmm. you know, Luis Garrido-esque. Also, since I'm horrible with names. Uh, that's Andres Imperial. There you go. He is also Imperiale. suspended for next the the next match. Yep. For, and then uh, Fatala Lash. Yep. Uh, going into the subs, so Tomas was subbed in for Ricardo in the 60, 60 second. Rico minute. looked gas. It was a good. It was a good yeah. sub. It really was, especially um, watching how it played out on the field. Well, I'll do the other one real quick. Uh, yep. Vicente Sanchez was subbed in for Kyoto, and he he made a difference. Definitely. Well, he got a goal Quickly, and an assist, yeah. so that's yep. definitely a difference. Uh, going into Tomas, though, you wanna you wanna do this now, or you wanna do it when we get back to break? Uh, no, we'll talk about Tomas here in just a second. You didn't say the other one. You missed Morrow. Oh, I missed Morrow. That's Morrow the most important one, really. Yeah, uh, Kubo probably had the worst match this year. He's had him. some pretty pretty bad howlers, but yeah. it was it was a bad match. I um, agree with you there. And. Uh, honestly, because of that match, uh, Maro has to start this week. Well, there's so there's three match. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. We'll, yeah. We really will. But we'll, we'll set that up before we before we hit our break. Though there is one more thing, and you you hinted at it: the Dynamo defense. But the the yes. player again, my player of the match, and again, this is a player that continues to go unheralded by by a lot of people and a lot of fans is Juan David Cabezas. This guy. Is and, and you know I had the question came up on Twitter and this was great because it was perfect. Yeah. The question came up on Twitter: If you could only keep one of Elise or Cabezas, who do you keep? You know, okay. it didn't take me long to answer this. Cabezas, Cabezas is going to be cheaper. Well, it's not just his his cost, but it's the position that he plays. Mm. I can go find other wingers that are the capability in in that of of an Elise. Yes, I can't do that with DMs. You can find some that are out there, but. 
they're few and far between, and at the at the age that Cabezas is at, mm -hmm. and with the way that he plays, it's just it's an absolute perfect fit for the Dynamo. Mm -hmm. And so if, if if I can only buy one or the other, if ownership were to come to me and say you can only buy one or the other, I'm buying Cabezas because I can build around that. Yeah, Elise, he's a winger. He's on one side of the pitch. Cabezas is all across. Yeah, I know. He's all you know. Cabezas <laughs> is all across the pitch, so he's everywhere. Yeah. I had it still 25. Oh, I know. So we're good. Just letting you know. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely time. <laughs> so uh, Save we the, will, uh, yeah, when we Tomas come. Tomas talk next? Yeah, we're going to break. Uh, okay. So before we come back, or when we come back, we'll talk about Tomas Martinez and his impact on the match and uh, how he looked as a D, as our you know DP. Yeah. Um, and uh, as always, you're listening to us on YouTube Live or Facebook. Uh, no, no, we're not on Facebook. Just kidding. <laughs> YouTube Live, SoundCloud <laughs> later, uh, iTunes, Google Play Music. Uh, but most importantly, we're out here at 8th Wonder, so come on down and hang out with us. Say hi. There you go. Hi, I'm Andrew Wanger, and you're listening to The Peel. All right. We're back. Yeah, you can intro us in. I can intro us in. Yeah. You're listening to The Peel. <laughs> at, and if you're out here at 8th Wonder, what's up? Um, you're listening to The Peel on YouTube and all those other things. I don't need to do that again. That's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but we were we were going to talk about Tomas. Uh, yes. You know, Tomas came on for uh, Rico. Rico looked ex extremely exhausted when he came on. Um, and Tomas came on. And, you know, for me, Tomas looked one of the better players on the pitch from a creativity standpoint. And he looked like one of those players that, given some more time and given some more minutes, is going to, he's going to make a huge impact on the team in terms of, I could see the possession that they were talking about. I could see his ability to distribute his vision was absolutely on display. I mean, that last pass that he made to Sanchez to bust, you know, break past the line, that was gold. Mm -hmm. That pass, if I could get six of those a game, we're scoring three, four goals a game. You know, and that's just those. That's not yeah. even counting anything else. So it's like I was I'm ready. You know, uh, apart from stats, just face value, I was extremely impressed with the. I mean, when what time did he get subbed in? The fifty something minute? No, the sixty something minute. I mean, 60 for the second minute, yeah, twenty or the thirty minutes he played. He made a lot of those 30 minutes. Oh, he did, and you know what he said uh, after you know in other interviews that he mm. was tired. Um, you know, that he definitely knows that he needs a few more games to get acclimated to Houston, to get acclimated to the heat and humidity, to get, you know, to get back into full match fitness. Yeah. But if I can get those 30 minutes out of him every match for the next eight days that we have matches, then do I'm you think perfectly fine with that. Because of the three matches in eight days, do you see him getting a start within that stretch? No, I see him subbing on all three matches, though. Okay. I see him playing. I don't see him starting because I... He only played 30 minutes, and he, he looked ex he looked just gassed. Now, I say that, but playing in Vancouver, that's not an issue. No. The heat isn't there. So okay, I can so see let's him say maybe starting in Vancouver. Gas. Do you think a lot of that was he wanted to put everything he had in those 30 minutes? I think some of it is that. I think some of it is he hasn't played, really started you know soccer games in a long time, soccer matches in a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I think part of it is it's just his style, too. Uh, you kind of hit on it. You know, he, he plays all out. Um, and I think he was there to prove a point, too, uh, that he belonged. And I feel like he definitely proved that point for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I know that um, Wilmer was asked about Tomas. Yes, um, I mean. <laughs> and uh, I think we have a Wilmer quote related to that. We do. And so we'll play that right now. This was at practice earlier this week. Uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Right? No. Oh, was that yesterday? I don't know. You were the one out there, not me. Yes, I was off. It, no. was practice, it was practice one of these two days. Monday, because I worked. All right. All right. So it's practice go. Tuesday. I mean, yes. Monday. Monday. Yes. Uh, what were your thoughts on Tomas's uh, debut? I think it was, uh, it was very positive because he showed that he is different. Uh, we're not expecting that he looks like any of the guys that we had or that we have. Uh, Tomas is a, a playmaker who moves all over, has a lot of dynamic. It's going to be very skillful with his left foot, uh, but he moved very well. And right away, he was looking to get involved with the ball. So that's that's good news for uh, for all of us. So it was good. Of course, he needs to get some minutes, and little by little, with minutes and with games, it's going to be better and better. So that was that was Wilmer talking about uh, Tomas and, and uh, his impressions of Tomas. 
and you know it it, it really says a lot about Tomas. And, you know, I kind of hit on it earlier when talking about Morrow. Tomas came in and was immediately coordinating with Morrow. Mm. I, and, you know, for his first minutes in a match to see that. And it wasn't like he was just like, oh, hey, I'm going to be over here positionally. It was like, hey, you know, where do you want the ball type of stuff. I mean, mm. it was stuff that you expect to see out of superstar players. Um, I, do I think he's going to come to that level? I sure as hell hope so. But, you know, there's a long way to go. I don't want to put the cart before the horse. But seeing him do that just speaks to the type of person and the type of player he is. Um, and his mentality coming here is that he wants to be a leader. And, you know, I feel like our future is absolutely bright between Morrow and Tomas for sure. And, you know, if we can, you know, if we can sign a lease, you know, for the transfer at the end of this season. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a young core of players in the attack that, you know, excluding Kubo, not even counting Kubo, not even counting Kyoto, not even counting... Um, you know, memo. Mm. I mean, that's just so many young players that are capable of bringing it game in and game out. Yeah. Scores? It scores. I don't have them up. I hope you I do. can get them. Yeah, that's probably a good thing. You should do that. Yeah. Where are we at? So, I got them. Yeah, yeah it's scores. Oh, we got, yeah, we got to talk about Vancouver versus Houston. After yes. This yeah, we'll, we'll set that up. You're good. Yeah, yeah, right we got plenty this. to talk about after this section. All right, so uh, Saturday we had a few matches. We had Seattle taking on uh, or hosting Kansas City. Uh, Seattle taking out one nothing, helping us out. That was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, Toronto winning four four one, also Portland. helping us. Yes, uh, all the all everything that we needed to happen pretty much happened. It, it, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm not gonna jinx it. I'm not gonna say anything. But no, it just feels a certain way that I can't <laughs> I can't say until the end of the season. Uh, we did have Columbus hosting Chicago and beating them, taking three points away. When, when uh, I saw that scoreline during the match, like mm. during the Dynamo match, I was confused almost. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. Columbus definitely has the capability to, to do that. But to see Chicago go down like that was just, it was almost shocking to me. Really also, was. side note, that was Columbus's thousandth goal in MLS. Wow, that's crazy. Crazy, yes. crazy, crazy. Uh, New York Rebels uh, hosting Orlando City, beating them 3-1. Uh, Orlando City seems to be struggling mm-hmm. here lately, <laughs> as well as this next team. Both F- of them. FC Dallas um, and Colorado. FC Dallas nil, nil. also got screwed again in VAR. Well, not screwed. That was a fair call. Again, two fair calls in a row. It, it, it is. They're not getting but screwed. But they're going to say it's screwed. They're not <laughs> getting screwed. What's happening is they're finally getting their just desserts for what's really supposed to be happening, which is correct calls what that don't said. go their way. Correct. Uh, they did draw to uh, Colorado, hosting the, Colorado. The big news surrounding this, which yes. we will talk about here again in a second, is that uh, Pablo Mastorini was released from his duties, relieved of duties as head coach of Colorado as a yep. result of that match, which was crazy to me. You know, the guy's one year off a really deep run in the playoffs, and and they sack him. Yeah, one of their best, one of their best seasons yet, and he's gone. Just um, like that. New England hosting Vancouver, which I have some some stats on this, uh, losing. Or excuse me, New England winning one nothing uh, over Vancouver. This match, I <laughs> what happened? Philly goes and wallops FCD three nothing, and then they come out and lose three nothing to Montreal. I'm going to tell you in say. short. I'm over the front office. I'm over Ernie Stewart, and I'm over the ownership group. It was a, and it, it was sucks. a very Philly result. They they didn't make any moves at the tra- or transfer window. Um, no. Jim Curtin, as much so as I like him, it's time to go. The Astros of the transfer of MLS this year. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. Except they weren't that good to begin with. Nah. <laughs> uh, they did lose at home 3 nothing to Montreal. And then, of course, you had Dynamo versus San Jose. We won 3 nothing. Yep. Yeah, buddy. Uh, then you had the 2 uh, the nothing beautiful, beautiful away score, win man. by NYCFC over L.A. Uh, L.A. is a mess right now. They've been a mess. Another, another mess. stat that I saw during the broadcast, which I found interesting. Out of the West Western Conference team, L.A. has the most road points. Weird. Uh, not really. Not really. Because, I mean... It, Part of it is just players coming back at the right times and you know injuries and things like that, and they've just been unlucky for that most of that. But it's also chaos. Too. And then the match that was Saturday, they got moved to Sunday. Oh, Can, that match was crazy. Oh, uh, my goodness. RSL winning one nothing over DC. Can there I were, just say how deep that water was in the tunnel? There were pictures of that water <laughs> in the tunnel, and it was like three feet deep. Okay, yeah. maybe not three feet. But no, they was, said it was three feet. It looked three feet. They said it was three feet. Crazy. Um, yeah, no, they want you to swim out for uh, for when you come on the pitch. They want you to swim out. I knew I forgot to do something. I'm going to lose this week in fantasy. Oh. Uh, forgot to set my lineup. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> MLS fantasy. Yes. Uh, but that is the scores of the weekend. 
Uh, Can you? Uh, where are we at? It's and I need my uh, show notes, buddy. Uh, we were going to talk uh, league news. No, we were talking. Ah, that's right. We're setting up the Vancouver match. Yes. So you so, wanted to give the stats for Vancouver. I have a I lot have, of notes. I have something of very importance to note from that match, which okay. is that Matthias Laba has a ACL injury and is out for the remainder of the season for Vancouver. He is one of their key playmakers in the middle of their field, um, and him being out is a huge bonus to the Dynamo, especially on a shorter week for us like that. It'll be good. Yes, that match will be 9 o'clock our time. Uh, it's on the West Coast. It yep. will be on Cube 57. I just want you to know, looking at that form right there, mm. that's Houston draw, win, draw, draw, win. We are undefeated in how many games? Six, seven? That'd be five on there. Oh, five there, but I think we're at yes. six or seven, actually. Yeah. Six or seven. Uh, I have the form on Six or seven straight with results, and that's what counts. Yes. So, uh, the setup against Vancouver, this is the 12th match all time uh, against Vancouver. Yep. Yep. Uh, out of 11, 11 fixtures. We are sitting at, and I have some bad news, um, four wins, five losses, two draws. Okay, but we, we talked about this. Negative on, two goal difference. Yeah, we talked about this in Facebook Messenger. We did. It's a bit unfair right now, and, and I think, you know, trend score line or trend, trend stat lines like this where you're looking back at previous seasons are a bit of an aberration because you're talking about players, A, that are different now. Yes. Uh, I did not mean to sound Canadian there with the A, but that was well placed. <laughs> Um, you know, players that are different uh, from players that were there last year, especially mm. with Dynamo. We're talking almost a complete roster overhaul yes. with the exception of like four players. Um, and, and probably when we play Vancouver, maybe even just three players. Mm. I mean, you know, it's going to be one of those types of things. Um, so it's, it's different players, different coaches. It's different organizations really at this point. Uh, they're both trending in very different directions. Um, you know, but that, I think that's the biggest thing. Now, granted, yeah. the Dynamo are, are not the best on the road. But I think you're coming off a great, fantastic win at home. Mm. I think Wilmer has the players and the depth now to be able to push for that for that victory there, that win there for that three points. And I, I've said all along, if we can come away with five points from these three games in eight days, then I will be content with that. Yeah. That's one win, two draws. Um, or, you know, if we come away with six points with two wins, I'm really ecstatic. Um, I think I saw someone tweeting out earlier this week. It might have been Cisco. might have been Liam. Um, might have even been Travis uh, talking about how many points we need according to some site that measures percentage chances and things like that for playoffs. Mm. Um, and I think they said if we go 14 points for the remainder of the season, which we have 10 games to get 14 points, it's not hard. Uh, then we have a 98% chance to make the playoffs, mm. um, and that would put us probably fourth or fifth. Um, my target is third or fourth. I don't want first or second, um, and that sounds crazy. That sounds crazy, but there's a reason for that. We'll go into that in a little bit, though. Okay. Uh, and what he was referring to when it comes to the stats, uh, so six total road wa or road matches, zero wins, five losses, one draw, and a negative eight goal difference. Um, we don't fare well typically in Vancouver, but, again, we've not had Kyoto and Kubo. and You know what Tomas. stat I wouldn't mind trying to find is the Dynamo stat on turf. Oh, it's not good. It is not. I can't good suspect a lot of teams are unless they're the home team. Even home teams struggle on turf a lot of times. Uh, it's crazy. I mean, it, it, it's. Um, I really don't have. I want to have thoughts on why that is, but it's just it, the ball bounces differently. Yeah. Um, I think there's enough time that the Dynamo will get up there and plenty of time to get comfortable on the on the turf mm. and that sort of thing. But we won't we won't know till they play. Yeah. So. Uh, so last match we did play them uh, May thir May thirteenth here at home. It was a two one win. Yes. Uh, Albert Lee scored his fifth goal of the season with an assist from yes. Kyoto. Yes. Uh, Sixty eighth minute uh, was a PK goal by Kubo. Uh, it was his eighth of the year. Yep. Mara was, was, was the box. one who was fouled in box. Um, and of course Brett Shea had to be a little jerk and score in the eighty fifth minute. Um, in that yeah. match though, at least did leave uh, in the thirty first minute with an injury. Hopefully not this not this time. Well, he can't because he won't be playing in that match. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> hey, 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 that's a bonus, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, let's going on to the last time we played at Vancouver. Fun fact: it was Wade Barrett's first match. It was Wade Barrett, and it was um, it was uh, immediately after Coyle was relieved yes. of Well, after the mutual parting uh, well, of ways. Well, let me because I thought I looked at this. You did. It did, was twenty sixth. No, 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 no. Did Wade Barrett manage the? Uh, Charities Cup, or did he get fired after the Charities Cup? Because that was that same year. I think it was against Santos Laguna. Wade Barrett or Coyle? Who coached that? That's what I'm trying to remember. Did Coyle coach that, or did he... 
Did he part ways after that match? I don't think they had a coach for the Charities Cup match. Okay. Uh, but that match was May 29th last year. Uh, yep. it, it, it was a 1 1 draw. Yep. Uh, Beasley did score his first in the minute, or yep. in the second minute. Yep. His only Dynamo goal. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then Vancouver scored in the 52nd. By the way, Josh, yes, you were right last week. That was Beasley's goal yeah. in orange. <laughs> so we're clarifying. Also, Alex uh, for us and Morales for Vancouver were both red carded uh, in the 42nd minute for violent conduct. I don't remember how that all played out. Uh, it was a bad foul, and then they got into a tussle, and nobody swung or anything, but there were pushes and yes. things like that. It just is what it is. Uh, so Vancouver does sit seventh in the uh, Western Conference with a record of 9 9 and 4, 31 points. Uh, and they do have two matches in hand on that. Enemy. Yeah, but it's just like the Dallas matches in hand. Mm -hmm. That's going to actually hurt them down yep. the stretch because that's more matches in shorter, shorter times. So. Yes. You know, and we'll talk about that also. In a minute. Uh, also, uh, since the last time we played, our records are fairly close to each other. Uh, Vancouver six five and three since the last time they played us, hmm. and we are five four and six, both with twenty one points. Interesting. Yep. Interesting I did some digging. I was bored. Yeah, I could tell. Wow. Uh, Same number of points though. That's that's incredibly cool. Yep. Uh, their latest, they are two or three two and one in their last six, and we are three zero and three in our last six. Oh, so their last six is identical to their home record? Yes. That's kind of nuts. <laughs> I'm looking at when it like, I wait, what that, are you looking no, at? No, trust like, me. What? Oh, when, cool. I was, when I was filling this out, or when I was doing the notes, I had I literally had to count these games twice because I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, yep. Really? See, you can see our, our, our the dynamo form. Win, yep. draw, draw, win, draw, win. So yep. that's the last six, at least, that we are with the result, in uh, our, with points in our last six. That's, that's Vancouver incredible. is coming off that one nothing loss to New England Revolution. Uh, on in the road. Yeah. New England, yes, on the road. Uh, their last home match was a 2-1 loss to Portland. You know, we July play 23rd. very similar to Portland, and I think that that kind of speaks to why I think that we can come out of this with a win. Same same type of thing and same type of setup, so yes. I think it'll be good. Uh, you hey, want to do... That has a Beasley kit? Number yes. 21, that's pretty awesome. That's an old school Beasley. Yeah, it is very. That's Funny early, story. Oh, well, early I told Dynamo you, Beasley. Yeah. I told you that, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. that argument I had with yeah, a certain individual. Yep. See? I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> I should take a picture of that. Um... Uh, we could do power rankings next segment after we get Carson on. Are we at? No, he wasn't. Holy crap. Yeah. Where the heck did that? Okay, so real quickly, <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, okay, yeah. So anyways, the, the most important thing really coming up for this is uh, player rotation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have three matches in eight days, so it's a matter of is Wilmer going to rotate players in and out. And I, I you know, like I said, the, the red card forces him to a little bit, at least as far as Elise is concerned. Yes. I think he'll do the same thing with Kyoto. I think he'll do the same thing with Kubo and Morrow. And I think he'll do the same thing with... Uh, with, you know, Alex is coming off a rest, so I think Alex can probably play all three if he needs to, probably start all three, and then Tomas will probably sub for him. Um, you know, Rico will probably start all three as well, but Rico's going to have to come off in two of those because I think he's going to be gassed as well. Yeah. Uh, but you also have Boney in the wings now that can come in and play and, and help solidify that as well. Uh, so, you know, I think there's just going to be a lot of cycling in and out, and I think that's good. That's what we need to do at this point. And, and uh, like I said, I'm I'm looking forward to looking for five points in the three matches. Mm. Um, I don't want to lose a single one, and I think five points is very obtainable in these three matches. I, um, I'd have to agree with you. And I would be content with, you know, drawing with uh, Dallas midweek, mm. um, you know, next week midweek. Um, and then I would be content with a, uh, a draw here at home against SA SKC after such a long you know, so after eight days, even though so, it's a home match, that's rough. We have some time. We could run through the schedule and instead of Carson. Well, uh, I don't know if we really need to run through it, but I will say that after these three matches, we have a two oh. week, we have a, like a full week layoff, or like a two week layoff early, um, which is great because that's yes. rest that we need after those three matches. And I will say this: I rest looked that for, we need. I looked. Yeah, <laughs> I looked further ahead, uh, and our next three games in seven days mm. is immediately followed by another two weeks Ooh. off, and it's it's preceded by a. By a two or like a one and a half week, uh, 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 break. one and a half week break as yeah. well. So we're going to be well rested going into that, and that's that's fine with me. I'm okay with that. Uh, I will cover one one that's what's going on right now. Montreal is beating Chicago three nothing. Holy moly! Piotti has two, and Mancuso <laughs> Mancosu has the other one. Mancosu. Yes. I can't pronounce his name because uh, you want to say Mancuso because it's how we can run through these real quick. It won't take long. Sure, go ahead. Uh, Friday, it. we got Portland hosting uh, New York Red Bulls. Uh, Saturday, uh, Montreal hosting RSL. RSL's been uh, turned things around lately. Um, Orlando's hosting uh, Columbus Crew. 
I expect uh, that to be a Columbus crew slaughtering of yes. Orlando at this rate. Uh, Chicago uh, will be hosting Toronto. I'm intrigued. I would be intrigued, but I think Toronto's going to run away with that. Uh, best case scenario for the next match, SK- oh, yes. SKC will be hosting Dallas. Nothing, nothing draw. I really don't care. I I, I want to see a nothing, nothing I mean, draw, I, but I want to see love them, Dallas getting beat, I want to see them run each other into the ground. Yes. Uh, two of the worst teams in the league, Colorado, will be hosting D.C. United. Uh, interim uh, coach, Colorado. Yep. yep. Uh, we already talked about that one. Yep. San Jose will be hosting Philadelphia Union. <laughs> They're very close in records, though. Nine, yeah. 10, and five, 6, and 8, 11, and 5. NYCFC will be hosting New England Revolution on Sunday, and then Seattle Sounders and Minnesota United uh, play Sunday night. Yep. So, Are we here next week? Next week? Yeah, Wednesday during the double. Yes. Yes. So yes. we're, yeah, we're gonna be. That's a good. That's a good segue into there a little go. break next here. Wednesday. So yeah, next week we're gonna be here at Eighth Wonder. So you come on down, and on top of that, we will stick around and we'll have our own little kind of mini watch party. Yes. Uh, With that being said, we are gonna be going live at five thirty because kickoff is at seven. Yes, which means I have to get off work early. So I'm glad yes. you mentioned that. And and you work from home. Well, <laughs> I do, but I still have work. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, uh, you're listening to <laughs> that was a terrible segue. You're listening to the peel on uh, YouTube Live right now, uh, out here at Eighth Wonder, which by the way is beautiful tonight. Yes. Uh, and uh, also on uh, delay on well, I guess not delay, but recorded on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music. Hey, what's up, guys? Kaylin Carr here, and when I'm listening to Houston Dynamo news, I'm listening to the peel forever orange. Welcome back to the Peel. We are live at Eighth Wonder, and we're about to bring Carson Merck on. I think. Are you, yes. is, he, is he coming I'm on? Him up. So it is. It is RGV time for sure. Uh, I know that Edson is just absolutely ready for this. Carson said he's born ready. I asked him if he was ready. Carson's always ready. Always <laughs> ready. Yeah, and just for your knowledge, Cisco, you're right. You and I both have losses. The, the next three games, we both have pretty bad. And Liam, it's not over. He it's has, never over. <laughs> that's very true, especially this show. Uh, he's got he's got us on two draws and zero wins and zero losses, and I have one loss, one draw, and one win for the next three. So four points, he's got us on two points. No, I've got one win, sorry. One win and two losses. He's got one loss and two draws. So two versus three points, just so it's clear. What's up, Carson? Not much. Not much. It, things are things are trending up for us. Yeah, that's what um, I heard. So you've got a lot to talk about. I was, you know, messaging him before this, and uh, big match from RGV this past weekend. Yeah, it was it was a big match for I would say two people in particular, um, Borja and Galicia. Um, he was ridiculous. Had a couple super close range saves. Um, only goal he gave up was on a penalty, which the penalty was kind of sketchy in my opinion. And then also, um, Ivan was great. Got the match winner. Um, played a great uh, game defensively as well, but obviously to score the match winner is a, is a special or a draw. They, they use late equalizer as always a big thing. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I don't have anything to add to that. Sorry. So, um... Oh, I did it. I hadn't done it in a while. I lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, that's a fail. Um, <laughs> so the 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 last goal, um, I, I read your article just a little bit. Um, I have to apologize. I have not, Carson. I will read that either tonight <laughs> or tomorrow. So so go ahead and describe that goal um, how, and how it all played out. It was a good ball in from uh, Jorginho James, who had been especially well on the ball lately. Um, his long pass and his improved. So he sent in um, a long aerial ball into the box. Mm. It was actually Ivan headed it to Todd Wharton, who had his back to Ivan, who had it in. So it was, a, it was a little bit of pinball, but it was, it was a beautiful game of pinball. And, and at least Sean admitted to not reading it at all. Like, <laughs> so I read, it, I read it a little bit. Like, he read it, <laughs> it or he just kind of skimmed Calling it over. I'm out, not sure how bro. to read that. I will, I will read it in detail, but I was also getting stats for this same time hey Carson so I have a question and, and this is just me not having been researched up enough on our players over at RGV what position does Jorginho James actually play he's a defensive midfielder he was uh, Charlie Ward's partner in crime when Charlie Ward was gotcha. there 
Um, now he's mainly partnered with uh, Todd Warden, who's kind of taken Charlie Ward's role, but um, he is a he is a big dude. The couple of times I've I got to talk to him in person. He is a big, strong dude and super aggressive, obviously, in tackle, so he's really good defensively. Um, but the fact that he's improving offensively and his distribution and uh, just on the ball in general, he could, he could be legitimately somebody that Dynamo will have to look at in the offseason. That's good to hear. That's actually really, really good to yeah. hear because I think we might have a player retiring potentially at the end of this season or I could, at I least could pulling that. back into a part-time role instead of a full-time role in Rico. Yeah. So where does that put RGV on the table, and uh, who do they got next? They're still a little bit below the red line. Um, thankfully, there's not a huge difference in points. The last playoff team is um, OKC. They have 29 points. The Rio Grande Valley is actually 12, so they only have three points left. Hmm. Um, but they haven't lost in the last three matches, which is good. And then just like their, their big brother, they also play uh, Vancouver Whitecaps. They play Whitecaps SP2. Uh, also on Saturday, and they just had a three-three draw uh, just a couple weeks ago. Man, it's a big matchup. I see that uh, VWFC two is uh, 14th in the league with like 18 points, so they're struggling just like their uh, big brother counterparts. That's yeah, and they're and they're horrible on the road. I know it's ironic to mention that on a Dynamo podcast, but uh, <laughs> Vancouver, <laughs> the Whitecaps two is really bad on the road. So hopefully they play really bad at ATG Park. Yeah, that'd be great. So, uh, I do got to ask, because uh, we'll, we'll talk about this a little later, but you being an Ohio boy, um, what did you think about the match last night? Mm. I mean, that was, a, that was a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, it was rough, and I actually have a good friend that does some video work for FC Cincinnati, and so I actually haven't talked to him yet, but um, that was definitely rough. Honestly, I think the, the biggest takeaway other than that sucked, and that, you know, Obviously, you want to see a USL team make some crazy runs. Um, the fan support in Cincinnati was wild. That was insane. That and was insane. Game. I yeah, want to know they, what Don Garber was thinking. Because he was in the stands. I think he yeah, thinks just, that just that... back down there. And, <laughs> and for once, I actually made like a good soccer observation during that match. I said... You have to contest the headers a little bit more in the box. You can mm-hmm. use BWB chances like that. You get the post be in the regulation and sure as hell. I saw that. I saw knocked in, knocked in the winner. I felt good about myself. I felt bad. <laughs> yeah, you felt right. so good so about yourself. So you right. felt so good about yourself. You had to retweet yourself in like a shameless plug kind of moment. <laughs> like that's right. I was right. Look at me. It's all good, Carson. Well, I, I do had, the same I thing, bro. Like two weeks ago, I said that the Toros were really bad, and then they came back and won. So I, <laughs> I, I felt. Obligated to do so. I, I feel you. I did the same thing with Vincente before he came on. I was totally crap talking him, and he came on and scored a goal and, and an assist. So, so <laughs> I don't know if you're watching the live feed too, Carson, but I will do this in honor of your Ohio boys. Um, they I mean, played their hearts out, that's for sure. Yes. Uh, I did do a scarf trade, so I'm excited about this. Those one. are nice scarves. I it, like their scarf. It's the line. 2017 member scarf. Uh, So what I was going to say in relation to uh, FC Cincy before he gets off, I I think uh, FC Cincy is going to be one of those things that Garber views FC Cincy as a USL premier club, like one of the top clubs that's going to remain in USL, because you need a few like that that are going to have that good fan draw that aren't necessarily ready for MLS. I think they are ready for MLS, don't get me wrong. But I think he wants to to see them continue that for multiple years in a row. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think we're starting to see the trend upwards, but it'll be good to see. And... and, uh, and also, I think you're right in line with that. You're, you're completely correct. I think they want to keep teams like that in USL. Yep. Um, I know a lot of there was the rumors or discussions, whatever whatever you want to call it, about um, the USL affiliates of MLS teams actually going down to the new USL D3 yep. and then having that D2 just independent club. Yep. Um, so if you look at it that way, Cincinnati, there's no better example than that. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I actually like that idea. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. Give me some credit here, man. No, I'm not, I'm not all surprised over there. Discounting you at all, but I, I, I like that idea. No, I mean, it makes sense. And, and part of that is they need the draw from big, from teams like that. Uh, and you also need just players that can, you know, players that are international players that can see teams like that and go, hey, I can go play there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and it's also, it's good because it is a future long-term maybe expansion for MLS after, you know, 10, 15 we'll, years from now. Okay, we'll talk one. off air about what that could mean. That's very, 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 very true. Yeah. Um, but 
I don't have anything else for Carson this week, no? do you? So, uh, not really, but uh, Carson, where can everybody find you? They can find me at, at Carson Amorth on Twitter, and um, as we mentioned earlier, my Bull and his Horns article came out today, which Sean was nice enough to read. I won't mention anybody else there that didn't read it all the way through, but um, Lee Sean was nice enough to read it. Hey, Carson, <laughs> can you do me a favor? Can you tweet that article to me directly, and I will read it either tonight or tomorrow? I will, I will do that, absolutely. You I will are the finish man. it when I get off work tomorrow. And you know what? I'll do you a favor, Carson. We will retweet it on the <laughs> Peel's social media accounts, too. We'll give you a little pump out of that. How about that? that, that that's even better. <laughs> we love you, man. All right, Carson. Until next week. All right, guys. Later, Carson. Uh, you want to break, and we'll get into power rankings and finish up the show? Finish up I mean, Maybe I suppose there's still no. We've still got way more to go. It's not going to be broken anytime soon. Uh, we will break though. We will after this. We will go ahead and talk about the. Uh, do we need to talk more about the Cincy match or was that good? Um, I don't well, have any other takeaways. From I'll that just match. cover the score real quick and okay. So yeah, just we'll the run real okay. Quick. So once you do that real quick, then we'll break. okay. All right, we'll so follow our actual. In run. case you were living under a rock, um, it was probably at least in my eyes one of the biggest matches in soccer in America last night just uh, remove international soccer i mean for the oh, okay. game see you didn't the say that game, you said in u.s the that game itself when it comes to american that. soccer that match you know, and the u.s I'll, open cup man i see now you're putting qualifiers on i am no i i, I agree in u.s in open cup for sure 100 yeah. not a doubt um, i would even say in u.s excluding international match style games excluding international matches. tournaments and things like that it definitely by far was one. Well, not by far. It was definitely top two, top three. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it has huge implications for USL, huge implications for MLS, um, and huge implications, I think, for FC Cincinnati. Like I said, they become a USL premier you know, team, even though that's not what they're calling it. That basically is what it's going to be. Uh, but we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit more. No, we won't. That's I'm going to make it quick. That's it. All right, um, give me your take so on it. So the Red Bulls did beat FC Cincinnati uh, 3-2 in front of 33. In extra time. Yes, 33-plus thousand fans. It was like 33,716. At a U.S. Open Cup match. Yeah, no, absolutely. The Dynamo could barely draw like 4,000. I'm not touching that with tempo. So um, it, it, was, it was an atmosphere, and I had tweeted this a little bit. Um, some guy tweeted us back at like five o'clock in the morning, and I was actually responding to. Him. I was at work, um, but you know, it was something that I dream of. I wish we can get on a regular basis, but it was it was good. Uh, the The run itself by FC Cincinnati was the the Cinderella story of the season. Oh, absolutely. Um, it was well. There was one last year too, but I don't remember who it was. They didn't get. They didn't get deep. They didn't get to the semis. They got no. one shy of the semis. The the last team to do it was Charleston Battery in 08. Yep. Um, but Cincinnati and USL has taken this tournament seriously. It's one of the oldest tournaments in the world. Unlike MLS. Oldest tournament in the U.S. in all sports. Third oldest in the world. So it, it matters. There's, there's tons of history behind this. Yes. Um, sure. Unfortunately, their run did end last night losing 3-2 so we will have a all MLS uh, final in about a month uh, it will be SKC and the New York Red Bulls yep both of which I hate in Kansas City yes in Kansas City uh, so, hashtag so New Jersey I, pink house I, I do have one takeaway from this <laughs> and this is great so and I tweeted this out earlier yesterday no today I must have, actually I might have tweeted it out last night it got some pretty good run um, uh, 33,250 is yes. the official attendance at Nippert Stadium. That's a beautiful stadium, by the way. University of Cincinnati Stadium. Yep, it's a beautiful stadium. Yep. I like the University of Cincinnati. Um, but uh, so SKC, uh, New York is going to SKC. Red Bulls are going to KC. And it will be Aurelian Collin returning home to KC. <laughs> and I said it would be extremely fitting if Colin were to help New York Red Bulls win the Open Cup over Sporting Kansas City, his old club. And I would absolutely 100% be okay with that. Because I don't want to see KC win. Yes. Um, and even though I absolutely can't stand Aurelian Collin, I'd rather have him win than have KC win. So, And I don't hate KC. I just don't like them. So I'm going to ask you, um, Andrew, you said we need to revive the fan base. Andres. 
on, on his name is Andres, yes. but he goes by Andrew. Okay. Yes. I'm just Andres. clarifying for you. All right. I love you, Andres. Foxtrot. I, I I would love to find out how we can do that, and I don't think the Dynamo do a good enough Why job. Why don't you read what he said instead of people can't see it, and if you don't read it. Uh, he says that we need to revive the fan base if we want to draw good numbers in the stands. Houston is a tough crowd. It is, and that's, that's the biggest issue I have. How do we do that? Short of lowering ticket prices, short of putting a roof on the stands, I, I think stadium. it's. I think it's happening. Um, I think it's just they need to see it all the way through. Yes. Um, I think sustained, continual winning, sustained, continual competitiveness, sustained, continual entertaining soccer mm. um, is going to win the day. Uh, I do think there's some marketing that can be done to improve what they're doing right now. Um, you know, I I am very lucky, very blessed to have one of the better season ticket reps um, by far in Julio Yarena, but. I know that there are others who have, you know, had issues with their season ticker reps. And the one thing I will say, and um, the one thing I will say <laughs> is if you have problems with your season ticket reps and you try to reach out to them, if you don't try to reach out to them and you've got a problem and, you know, if, if it's not a problem with them, if it's just Mine a problem. every three months. If it's, well, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, if it's just a problem in general that you have, you know, with the Dynamo or with something going on, or with you know whatever it is related to your seat or related to your tickets, if you don't talk to your season ticket rep, you have absolutely no excuse to complain. You have no right to complain. It's just like voting. If you don't vote, you can't complain about who gets elected. Um, and that wasn't meant to be political. I was just using an example, just so that's clear. Um, <laughs> but it, it's the same type of thing. Your season ticket rep is there so that you have somebody to somebody to offer those. Hey, this is going on. Can you help me rectify this? I can't tell you the number of times that I'll give Julio a call or shoot him an email or see him at a match and be like, Hey, I've got a new person with me this week. They've never been to a soccer match. What can we do to, you know, what can we do to make that experience better for them? Or, Hey, you know, I'm not going to use my ticket this week. That hadn't happened this year, but that happened last year a couple of times. I'm not going to be able to use my ticket. Do you have somebody that you can give it to or, Hey, can I donate it? Or, Hey, can I get a ticket to a different match instead? Um, you know, that kind of thing. And he's always 100% always been there, ready to help out whenever yeah. possible, whenever needed. And I say that because I hear from him a lot. And as a season ticket rep, I think it's important for him to be able to get his voice out there, too. Mm-hmm. That a lot of his a lot of his season ticket holders, they don't tell him things until it's end of the season or late in the season. Like right now, renewals have just started. Yep. And he had somebody that now this deep into the season just mentioned that they don't like the fact that uh, people at right before halftime walk by their seats coming down the stairs because of uh, the halftime show stuff that goes on. And I'm in the same section, so I totally understand the complaint. But what I don't understand is why you wait until this point in the season to finally bring that up and then try to act like you're hedging buying season tickets or renewing your season ticket because of it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I understand you may not want to get the season ticket for next year. Okay, cool. That's not a problem. I have no problem with that. But if you're gonna if you're gonna use an excuse, don't use that one because mm-hmm. that's lame. Sorry. So. I, that's a soapbox thing, and I know Julio will appreciate that call out. And the front office is listening. Yes, they actually are listening. Yeah. Right on, Andres. I feel you, brother. Yes, I did. Uh, I, I was going to bring that up uh, a little later. Yeah, no, we were going to do that after the break. The, I had that already on the, well, I didn't okay. have it on the schedule, but I had Sweet. it in mind. To this All right, well. Uh, Good call out, though, Cisco, just so you know. Uh, also, we will be getting into this. A little later, but right now the Dash are up 2-1. They are currently playing right now. What a goal. <laughs> oh, that's the one that Daly got hurt, by the way. Anyways, okay, people can't see that, so we probably should continue <laughs> the show. Uh, so you're listening to, actually, the, the Peel is currently live at 8th Wonder. Uh, feel free to come out. If you don't come out this week, come out next week. We will be here again live starting at 5.30 next week. That's 5.30 Central Time. Um, but uh, we are live here at Eighth Wonder, and we are also uh, live on YouTube. You can catch us up, catch us on YouTube. You can hit us up on our website at thepeellive.com. You can hit us up on Twitter. Oh, sorry, I don't need to do that yet. You can hit us up on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music for a rerun of the podcast uh, to give us a listen, and we appreciate you. Thank you. What's up, y'all? I'm Demarcus Beasley, and you're listening to The Peel. And we are back. There we go. Welcome back. So you want to do power rankings and then dash? Um, we had something we were going to talk about before that. Ah, the JD. Oh, is that what yes. you're talking about? The JD. The JD. Well, no, power rankings were separate. Oh, okay. that, well, that, JD yes. power. We'll do the, that. The, and I loved how the Dynamo did it. It wasn't intentional, but it was the greatest pun ever. They said the AJD power rankings <laughs> or power uh, AJD uh, rankings or whatever, survey rankings. It was great. So uh, the... the 
the JD Power Group uh, did a survey that went out um, among all fan bases, of not all fan bases, but all ticket holders, I guess, of many different sports uh, in a lot of different cities. Um, and uh, in Houston, at least, and in actually three other MLS, uh, uh, three other MLS cities, um, the MLS clubs were the top team for the best overall fan experience for game day experience in the city. So the Dynamo were first, um, and I think the other three were L.A., New England, and New York. Wait, there's five there, isn't there? There's, there's, a, there's a few and MLS Philly, And teams. Philly? Yeah. Wow. I'm surprised the, by Philly. The, no, the game day atmosphere there, it's... I guess Sons of, ben, Sons of Ben really makes that game day atmosphere the in Philly. The stadium's beautiful. The, yeah. sur- the Other than the Chester side, the, the Delaware River part is beautiful. Uh, the pregame festivities are amazing. But you know what's interesting, right? You look at these, and I'm looking at... Um, well, see, they didn't measure. They didn't measure the West Coast, other than other than uh, other than LA. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to see if Seattle Sounders would rank higher than the Seattle Seahawks. I wanted to see if um, Portland Timbers would rank higher than Portland Trailblazers. And the reason this is important to me is because these two fan bases are considered the top two fan bases in the in the in the country. Yeah. You know, for soccer, anyways, and they're considered to have the best game day atmosphere. I, I want to know if their fans or fans in the city consider them to be the best game day atmosphere. Locally, you know what I found really odd was the fact that the Texans were ranked fourth. I think that comes from uh, on-field performance by the team, mm. and I think there's a lot of struggle that that fans have with that team. Mm. Um, and you know, I do as well. And I just watch from home because I ain't paying those ticket prices. Hell, Hell no. Um, but uh, I think that's where that comes from. I think what was surprising was the Rockets went from first last year to third this year, and the Astros bumped up to second. Now, I think one of the things, Dynamo were second last year, I think. Mm-hmm. I think one of the things that helped the Dynamo this year is the change to the east end, uh, yes. no, the south end, sorry, the south end yep. of the stadium in, in the concourse. That whole area has just absolutely amplified the game day experience. Yes. Like tenfold. Pre-game. Um, even during the game, it's easier to get in and out of lines. They, they've they've totally mm. overhauled the experience, and it just yeah. makes such a big difference. And I can tell you as a fan, as somebody who goes to these games to enjoy them, that it, it has definitely changed my enjoyment level of the games. Yeah. And it's yet another reason that if you don't have Dynamo tickets or you don't make it out to a game, you really should because the experience right now is best experience in Houston you're going to get, and it's cheaper than every other one of yep. those teams. Yes. Pro teams, it is. So, moving out of that, yep. Um, the ESPN did bump us up four spots. Power rankings. Pan- power rankings. Uh, we are currently eighth. Well, I put no stock into power rankings, especially. I put a ton of stock, ESPN. but it is not not ESPN. No. But MLS did move us up two spots, number seven, uh, and they say that back at the top of the West and unbeaten in six, Dynamo have a lot going for them. They have established a playing style and a regular starting eleven. And a luxury of bringing along Tomas Martinez slowly. Back-to-back road matches in Vancouver and Dallas will go a long way toward determining whether they can compete for the number one seed come fall. You know, speaking of that number one seed, and I mentioned this earlier, and I, I'm only going to very quickly hit on this because mm-hmm. I want to hit on it more next week, um, is, you know, finishing, excuse me, finishing third or fourth is better for us, I think, overall than finishing first or second. And, mm-hmm. Um, you know, it just ties into the playoff format, which we will discuss more in depth next week, which is kind of crazy considering what we have going on next week. But right. We'll find a way to fit it in. Uh, but let's go ahead and start talking about the Dash, man. They're, yeah. they're up 2-1 on Boston right now. Um, they uh, played, I believe it was, who did they play this weekend? Was it uh, Chicago? So they no. they did lose to SC Kansas City 1-0. It, uh, it was their second straight loss uh, on August 13th. They're, they're at a point, I feel like, they have to win every match. Yeah, pretty much. To close the season, otherwise they won't make the playoffs yet yes. again. And I think if this team doesn't make the playoffs again this year, and it seems very likely to be the case, um, that I I mean, the fan base has already waned to very minimal portions, mm-hmm. but um, I, I think they're very much in danger of losing any potential fans they yeah. might have gotten. Uh, they did fall to seventh in the NWSL standings with a record of 6-9-2. and two. But there was a big moment in that match. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Huge moment. moment uh, Carly Lloyd left with a left ankle injury in the 35th minute. Uh, I guess the positive of that is that the x-rays were at negative, negative, and they are they will be 
they're calling it a high ankle sprain. Yes, so, so it's so essentially she'll be out day to day. Pro- uh, she'll probably be out two to four weeks at yeah. least, which is really ma- the majority of the rest of the season at this point. Uh, as of right now, they are taking on currently There's seven matches left. Yeah, uh, they are currently taking on the ninth place Boston Breakers. Uh, they are one one zero one versus Boston this year, and they're up two and one right yes. now. Um, and in case you did want to watch it after the fact, uh, it's on Go Ninety. So the little short one right there, standing in front of the goal, yeah, that's Cupcake. Oh, okay. that's Andresinha. Uh Yes, as Sean stated, there is only seven matches left in the season. So in order yep. for them, their playoff hopes to even be alive, they the pretty much have to win out. Yes, they do. And that's going to be tough. So they've got some tough, tough matches. They, they do, and, and you know that's one of the things when you put yourself in that position where you. You aren't getting points earlier in the season. You make it tough for yourself to have to come back and try to get those points later when, you know, either a your team, you know, your players are t- more tired uh, than they normally are, mm-hmm. or where you're facing teams that are also v- trying to get points and, uh, you know, push for push for playoff positions, and they're willing to, you know, they're willing to go that extra step or that uh, you know push a little harder for it. Uh, as the case, maybe that's on Justine again. And Just, it's, it's going to be tough. Look at that pass from Cupcake. Oh, what a pass. And it's going to be tough because, I mean, with Carly going to be. Oh, oh, off the crossbar. <laughs> what a shot. I don't know who that was. Dang, that was a good shot. That might have been Amber Brooks. Um, or that was Sarah Hagen. That was a great shot. Oh, uh, league news. What else did you have? Uh, there's the Kaka red card that did yes. not get rescinded, even though he wanted it. No, and Orlando play. stood behind the red card, which I thought was odd. Absolutely. We already talked about Pablo Mastroeni and uh, yes. him getting released by uh, Colorado. Uh, they're, fourth, they're int- fourth MLS manager relieved of his duties this year. Uh, and it's important to note that they don't have another coach in place, which is not surprising. Mid-week, mid-season, you typically don't, unlike no. L.A. Uh, so they're going to end up with an interim for the rest of the year. Uh, yeah, they'll do just like the Dynamo did last year. And that's not always the worst thing in the world, except no. unlike the Dynamo where they had somebody who was ready to come in and play, uh, come in and coach this season in, in Wilmer in at RGV at their USL affiliate. Colorado no. doesn't have that. No. So they're going to have to find a coach. They're probably looking already to find one, but um, it will be interesting to see who they end up with. I mean, obviously, Bob Bradley's off the market because he's at LAFC now. Um, not that he would have been a coach for them, uh, but it would have been fun to see him link back up with Tim Howard for a season. Hmm. Um, and then other league news. Um, I told you about the Matthias Laba uh, yep. torn ACL. Yep. Uh, um, Don Dwyer's out. No surgery. Mm, that's good. Um, that's good. That, and that's, that's good mostly because I was concerned about him for, oh, what a ball. Oh, 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 oh. that's a goal. 3-1 Houston Dash in the 79th minute. Uh, Sorry, we're all very excited to see the Dash (laughs) score that goal. It was great. Uh, It was good buildup. Anyways, um, I don't have any other news in the league that I can think of. There were some other things that came out. um, But, um, you know, the the biggest thing, and I I think this will be kind of our closer for this week, um, and it's it's not necessarily quote unquote league news, but it's definitely news from MLS in general, uh, from soccer, from U.S. soccer. Uh, this this week, actually yesterday, uh, Will Parchman, who's a, a who was a big time writer uh, and cover guy for soccer in 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 this country on multiple websites, actually, um, he announced that he was stepping down slash kind of retiring from covering. Um, oh. Um, oh. Well, that's that's not true. That's a that's him trying to start a rumor. Um, but um, <laughs> they're posting so many things that Fell are to F- or LAFC. Uh, that's going to be the start of that dumpster fire. That's what I said last week. <laughs> yep. Um, but uh, so Will Parchman, you know, he, he's he's calling it a calling it a career in, in soccer coverage, and the main reason for that, and, and this is the important part of this, and this needs to be said because it's important for you guys to understand this too. Um, Cover guys in MLS don't make a lot of money. In fact, typically after your first, you know, first or second year, you start as an intern um, and you work your way up through the ranks as a reporter. And you know, cover guys like Corey um, has done. Yep. Um, they don't make a lot of money, and they're expected to be at every match, to be at as many practices as possible, to cover. Um, and you know, they don't typically don't have other jobs that they're running on the side. You know, they may run on multiple sites or something like that, but they don't have other jobs. Um, and it, it's a big commitment. And you know, one of the things that he spoke about is that, you know, he looked at, at where he was and, and he was making less money now than he could have been making in another career field um, at this point in his career yeah. at his age of, I think he said he's roughly 30, um, you know, and, and I totally get that and totally understand that. And 
I just want Will to know that you know from us as as somebody who consistently read what he what he wrote and followed him on Twitter heavily, and he will be still on Twitter. He will tweet out every once in a while, and hopefully he'll continue to write every once in a while. Um, but as somebody who followed him, you know, vehemently over the years, he was an absolute must follow within the uh, you know U.S. soccer world. Uh, for sure, and it, I'm sad to see him go, but I totally understand why, and I tweeted that out actually to him directly, but yeah. I just felt that he deserved a shout-out on our show, and I thought it would be a good closing moment, just like we had one last week with you know with uh, with Josh. Yeah. Um, and so... Which will be aired at a later date. Yeah, because he get, didn't get to see it. <laughs> um, and that may happen with this one, too, but that's okay. No. Uh, but, uh, you know, Will, if you're listening, if you happen to catch this, it will tweet out, by the way, that, that we're giving you a shout-out, but we, we just want you to know, man, that we wish you the best of luck with everything with future endeavors and everything that you got going on. We know you yes. got another career opportunity coming uh, that you've already set up. So good luck with that, man. And, and, you know, we look forward to following what you got going on, man. Yeah. Uh, so before we, before we go away, uh, join us next week. Um, uh, yeah, we'll get there. You're getting there. I'm just, I'm just, I was turning so it'd be easier to see. For uh, you. Join us next week. We will be here early. Uh, 5.30 will be when we go live. So are so. we planning 5.30 to 6.30? Yeah, we'll, we'll do 5.30 to 6.30. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to run into the game, obviously. No. That would be... What time the is latest, the 6.45, 7 o'clock. In Vancouver? No, 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 Dallas, next Wednesday. Oh, that's right. Sorry, yes. sorry. That's, next I, Wednesday. Okay, that makes way more sense. Um, we will be here at 8.00. So is that game also getting uh, pushed yes. to their alternate channel? And uh, then I don't know, but it'll be on Cube 57 it'll here. It'll be here in Houston. Actually, or is that on FS... Or Fox Sports. I think look. that's on. I think it's a yeah. rivalry, and it's on Fox Sports. I so uh, we will be here. We're gonna get together a little watch party. Uh, see if I can work so, yeah, out so, the deal. Yeah, definitely come on out. I mean, if nothing else, even if even if it's not official watch party type thing, we'll definitely yeah. be out here. We will be out here, Justin and I. They said um, all but one TV Edson, will be on that match. Uh, hopefully, Edson will be out here. All, yes. all TVs except one will be on that match. Because um, the other one will be on the Astros. You know, there's beer flowing from the tap. Yes. You know, there's food here as well. There's food trucks. You, I mean, you have absolutely no reason not to come out. If next you don't week have an eighth wonder pint, get one. For sure. For sure. Uh, yeah. If not, you get a lot less beer. That's <laughs> guaranteed. Um, also, then, so next week. Uh, so next you better week. better closeouts. What'd you say? You're better at closeouts. Oh, am I? Uh, that's, that's, that's good. <laughs> so next week, the, the main thing we're going to hit on next week, other than the matches, obviously, is we're going to discuss what it's going to take to make the playoffs for the Dynamo. And I know that every one of you is really intrigued by this. Uh, we'll go through a couple of different scenarios that can happen, as well as uh, kind of what my prediction for what's going to happen, and then also why I continue to say that it's better for us to get third or fourth over first or second. Uh, but that's going to do us for us here at the pool. At the pool. Wow, I totally. Anyways. <sighs> Strike one. I was doing great up until then. <laughs> Tried to he say pulled, too many things in one one. Uh, he one pulled minute. at me. But that's going to do it for, for us. Uh, it was fun. Good show. Edson, you did a fantastic job yes. on social media Edson. and on the chat. That was the most hopping we've ever had. You're hired. You're hired. <laughs> we can't afford to pay you, but you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> it's a free internship. Yeah, there you go. Hey, hey, you know what? You can stick it as social media manager on your resume from now there on. There you go. For a software developer guy. Well, that's, that's going to do it. That's going to do it for me. Uh, I'm Justin. I'm Sean. And that's, that's Edson. Edson. He doesn't have a mic. Uh, and as always, Forever, Forever Orange. Orange.